Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome back to another Hard Truth with myself, David Vance, and Alana Mercer. Hi, Alana. Hi, David. How are you? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm okay, all things considered. Um, it's great to be back, and uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these. And on uh, this particular one, Alana, we are basically broadcasting this across the universe. So uh, on this occasion, because um, the topics, I think we can we are going to hello to friends on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Odyssey, Getter, yeah, wherever you are, folks, you're all very, very welcome. Thanks for uh, th th thanks for joining in in the stream this evening. And of course, we should also say, Alana, you know, a lot of people watch this on replay as well as the people that catch it live because one of the things between you and me is there's quite a time zone difference between us, isn't there? So, you know, my, my audience is probably getting ready to... David, there's uh, no chemistry issues between us. There's oh. definitely none. No, oh, there's no, none. We understand each other perfectly. We, we 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 do, and and, and, and you know what? When we we talk, when we kind of plan these shows and the topics, sometimes things just—I don't know what you'd say, Alana. They just coincide. So there's big, big news. I mean, we we were frankly, what, the, I guess the, one of the major topics we want to talk about is the announcement by Robert Kennedy Jr. of his presidential bid. So we're gonna we're gonna move into that one, folks. Um, you know. That, that happened, and I thought that was one of the most important political, um, substantively uh, uh, political events to cover in terms of him delivering in a two-hour address, um, philosophically uh, dense address, uh, but also pragmatic and wonderfully hopeful. And then what happened? The Stacey Politai came for Tucker. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So let's start off with Tucker then, because Tucker Carlson, Alana, as long as you and I have known each other, I think one of the things we both said is that arguably the only thing worth watching on Fox News was Tucker Carlson. And came the news yesterday that Tucker Carlson is gone. So what was your, what was your reaction to that? Oh, my, I immediately uh, tweeted out and then blogged out, yay, Fox News is finished phone news or fixed news because uh, yeah, yeah. I know I don't want to bring this back to myself and I, I of course am not uh, unimportant but but I, but but um, as so many have made it made it uh, abundantly clear but for me uh, my, my relationship to politics is very much shaped by my anti-war writing and, and anyone who cares to understand uh, this uh, irrelevant writer um, that's when I burnt as, as as hot as a Babylonian kiln. And Fox was was the war porn channel, and they still are. So my thinking immediately was, yay, God, thank you. Um, because this is he he is the only um, mm. attraction, the only thing worth, the only person standing between us and, and the deep state and the surveillance state. Um, and now my thinking, my gut reaction was that now that Tucker's gone, Fox News will, will the, mm -hmm. the, the, the voice of the Republican Party with its, um, you know, with its uh, blonde war uh, porn flank are gone. <laughs> so that was my immediate reaction. But then. Mm. Yeah, I mean. I mean, the, th the thing about it is there's a huge chunk of people, Alana, like you and like me, who, who only really would watch, tune in to, to Tucker. Because, I mean, I, I'm not even impressed. I, I used to like people like Sean Hannity, but but I can't like him. I can't I, I, I can't go there anymore. I've always been a neocon, so I've never liked yeah. any, anything. Yeah. I mean, he's a, being, I guess, a purist, I, I, I could never uh, gravitate to it. And he always comes back to what is it? Uh, we were going to talk about RFK, who is not about Republican talking points or any talking points. He's about constitutional philosophy, the philosophy of ordered liberty. That's what we're going to talk about. But um, what is what is uh, Sean Hannity's mantra? I think it's a Republican talking. God, groceries and gas. Yeah, I would yeah. say. That, yeah, you know, we talked about that. Yeah, I remember. Well, we we talked about that about a year ago. I think I think we had a we, we had a bit of a run through that as a kind to of. To me, that's not enough. But however, oh, right. um, 
he he once very graciously in, invited me on his on his radio show, and he's he's a he's a lovely man. He's a perfect gentleman, and this is why, by extension, Tucker is a a, a lovely man. And the mm. fact that they are now um, speaking about all kinds of you know, it's always a woman who brings a great man down. <laughs> so uh, and a woman behind a great man, of course. So. Um, mm. Mm. You know, when they're trying to, to, to filthy his reputation, I say, yeah. uh, Sean, Sean Hannity is a perfect gentleman. At least he was to me, even though I came on to promote a very unpopular and the only position I shun now. I'm ashamed of what I, what I uh, was speaking to at that point, but he was so gracious mm -hmm. to me, and I believe Tucker is of the same caliber. And, of course, they are um, bad-mouthing him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These people will besmirch the reputation of, of anybody that uh, that they want to get rid of. But I, I would have thought, you know, Tucker was a huge ratings attraction to Fox News. So it makes absolutely zero sense to get rid of your biggest ratings attraction, Alana, unless there's an alternative or there's a nefarious agenda and play and i think that the, the old, my own feeling is that 2024 obviously presidential election year i expect nothing from fox they're useless and have been for a long time um but but tucker have, you seen, have you seen as soon as tucker i said to my husband as soon as tucker was taken off air and there was no um danger of the ukraine production being challenged all yeah. these governors yeah. were on CNN and Emerson and Glenn Youngkin was there speaking mm. about our commitment to Ukraine. And, oh. oh, wow, this is so, it's not orchestrated in a, in, a, in the conspiracy sense, but it's certainly there's tacit uh, schadenfreude, you know, there's a glee about his so-called demise. Oh. Yeah. But as Megan Kelly said, and, and I do not watch YouTube, in fact, I uh, watched her entire show. I like her. She's an erudite. She's okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and she has a beautiful presentation and voice. But, of course, there was, if you're like me and you can distill the information value of that hour and a half, hour and 39 minutes, agony, I, I watched it only for Glenn Greenwald. Of course, yeah. she went on about the Dominion and she said Tucker would be, would be. Um, she's not worried about Tucker, totally agree. Uh, this is good for Tucker, she said. Um, Tucker is about to dominate whatever, he'll crush whatever his space he goes into. He's a unicorn, she said. Um, love it that she, she also pointed out he doesn't even own a television. He's a reader, a writer, probably not, doesn't even watch her. So, of course, I agonized through this and, and also pointing out that Dominion is not the issue. My husband came to me and said, Dominion, I said, it's not Dominion rubbish. Uh, it's nothing to do with a lawsuit inflicted, nothing to do because this man is the cash cow. He's top rating host and the high, one yeah. of the highest ranking yeah. uh, shows in the country. Um, so it's not that. But then came, I, I for, the, for the 10 minutes that Glenn, Glenn Greenwald was on there, I had to watch an hour and 39 minutes during which I could have read a book and, and raised my IQ. Anyhow, anyhow, so Glenn Greenwald brought it back to the deep state. He brought yes. it back to yes. the confluence of right. evil work because Tucker is not Republican Party. He is, um, he's, not. He's, he's a, I would say he's a paleo-conservative. I'm a paleo-libertarian. So um, he has gone against the grain of all the productions that, that, that are part of the uni, uni party uh, plan. Right? Yes, he has, so, yeah. So, yeah. So for almost two hours of, of Megan Kelly, there were 10 minutes of gold from Glenn Greenwald. Yeah. I mean, I think in the past six months or so, Tucker's becoming more, he's been more and more outspoken, calling out the deep state. Great stuff, admirable uh, monologues. Um, and as you say, he hasn't he hasn't taken a party line at all. He's actually shown oh, fiercely. Uh, says Fox didn't want Tucker giving RFK positive press for the yeah. next. Absolutely, I I, yeah. uh, I call the states. That's Juvie. I call him Juvie, a friend, very perspective. Um, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think they, they, but I don't know. I mean, in in getting rid of Tucker, I think they've made themselves irrelevant to a big chunk of the, the middle audience. No, I agree with you, David, because uh, Megan Kelly insisted because she was modeling everything after her own enormous ego. And she said, uh, because 
as no sooner had she 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 came before Tucker. No sooner yeah. had she left. She was anti-Trump and didn't read the room at all. Um, no sooner had she mm. and she joined the these the left sexism on Trump and was oh it was it was, it was yeah, I remember. Yeah. she did all that and and no sooner had she left nobody remembered her when Tucker stepped into so she made the case that Fox is greater than a personality but occasionally comes a historic figure um like Trump or like Tucker and I don't think Fox is bigger than Tucker and I surely hope not Fo Fox is owned by uh, Rupert Murdoch, of course, Alana. Yeah, yes. And uh, if ever you wanted to, you know, get a, uh, you know, Siri, show me an example of the deep state, that would be Rupert Murdoch, actually. A, a via <laughs> Hasn't he recently gotten married? I think he's adult. He's a little... Uh... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, but, I mean, to be fair, he's 95. He's well in his 90s. And he's got married to someone 30 I think, years his junior. that woman is bending his ear. Nice bit. <laughs> Have a look over there. <laughs> so, anyway, so look, as I say, anyway, I Tucker's a big loss to uh, Fox, but uh, I think, as you say, it's a deep state takedown. It and, is. And also, David, I, I also think, to just get back to human nature, I think envy is a huge thing. Envy is a huge thing. And Tucker is a major mm. talent. He also, mm. He's also a shit-hot writer. Um, and as I pointed out in a quick blog post is, you know, yeah. the regression towards the mean and, and the need to, to, to sustain mediocrity in America is really prevalent. As yeah. a, a friend, uh, Clyde Wilson, a professor of history, uh, commented, he said, Tocqueville in the 19th century and Solzhenitsyn in the 20th noted that conformity of thought is powerfully prevalent among Americans. And I put it just, uh, to me, it's always the, that regression towards average, towards mean Mm. Um, is what I, Americans strive for. And I think this is what happens. You know, he stood out as, as such a talent. You, you can't get rid of him and have that that uh, homeostasis back again. Yeah, he was exceptional. And the thing is, I mean, he was challenging the vaccine. He was challenging Ukraine. He, he was challenging a lot of the stuff we go on about. But but he obviously, has, he had a huge audience on, on Fox. So I think they decided, Alana, well, we need to move against them and we'll do it now. But hey, wasn't it interesting, Alana, that on the same day that they took down Tucker on Fox, they also strangely took down, you know who I'm going to say, Don, <laughs> whoever he is on He's CNN. Not. I know, I know. Uh, I, think, I think it's great that he was just uh, dust DM. Idea was was just dusted yeah. up the carpet. <laughs> but <laughs> on. Actually, um, not to brag, but but I had been covering non entities like him from 2012. Yeah. I discovered him. I did not predict yeah. to make it Don Lemon, but I love Don Lemon. Yeah, his French chic it, um, pronunciation for Don Lemon. Yeah, um, you know he's he's of a piece with Anna Navarro and and um, uh, all all you know the just. Irrelevant people, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I, 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 thought, I thought it was quite an interesting day in media in America yesterday. And certainly the ramifications of the Tucker thing will, 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 will carry on because he the will... Thing is Tucker did overshadow the RFK thing because... Yeah, well, yeah, well, we'll get into that very, very shortly because I think that there's a lot of echoes... Uh, in, in some of the stuff Tucker's been saying, Alana, and in some of the stuff that RFK was saying, I, I think I see I see things between them. But uh, but anyway, all I would say is I, I'm sure Tucker will emerge. Um, I'm not sure where, but you know. Yeah, except that you know, I I don't watch podcasts, so how will I watch him? I usually run around doing housework when I listen to Tucker on TV. I know. Well, see, this is the problem, the curse of TV. But having said that, I think Tucker is doing the right thing by not having a TV, Alana, because you talk about trying to raise your IQ by by reading. I, I, I think I lower my IQ every time I turn on the TV after, like, you know. And to be fair, Tucker, in, despite his, his principal stands, it is sort of um, news porn. It's little bits and pieces just to keep you on edge all the time. There's I guess you, if you want to go to his more uh, extensive documentaries, some of some of them all very interesting. I guess, 
um, you know, it just feeds the anxiety. It, 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 he's, he's an important force, as um, my friend Nabosha Malik, the Serbian commentator, tweeted yeah. out and I shared, he, don't forget, Tucker prevented war on Iran, certainly. He flew to Mar-a-Lago to prevent Trump from, from, from doing that because Trump, of course, was, I know you have an emotional attachment there. <laughs> um, well, I, I do and I don't. I, look, I do and I don't. But I mean, Tucker has prevented wars, and yes. he's making the Republican Party, um, both dumb and evil party, um, think very hard about mm. about mm. war. And uh, of course, we haven't re yet heard DeSantis's position. It's very muddy about Ukraine. Tucker is sort of a lodestar. He's sort of a um, a guiding light, even though the, the program is very filled with small little bits of angst you know it's, mm. it's not something mm. that I, I i'm happy not to watch it i'm happy that tucker is there to keep sentinel yeah uh, in fact actually we just had a comment up there just uh over in rumble i can see uh just put, put it up there jed um, right one of her friends on on rumble said yeah it'd be wonderful if tucker took off the gloves when he gets on his next platform perhaps he has more to say than he's been saying uh, absolutely I'll, i'd agree with that. I'm, I'm sure i mean we, we all know the way it works in mainstream media you only can go so far there's so there's jed dragons tucker's lining to run up for president you know what, you know what? since we're segueing into rfk i would we say are gonna go there, yeah. rfk tucker carlson as independents Take on, please, I don't want to hear that woman. I actually recommended Tulsi Gabbard in my book, uh, 2016. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's gone. That's it. I'm sick of hearing, the American people, the American people, the American people want to zip. She has nothing to say, intellectually bereft. Let's have Naomi Wolf, Tucker Carlson, and, uh, Jay, uh, and RFK. Well, that's actually that would be a good trinity, yeah. Um, well, uh, so let's okay, so let, let's move on then. So, so we're going to get to RFK in a second, but 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 we can't ignore the fact that today, as he said on the what is it, the twenty fifth of April, twenty twenty three, four years from the the last time, the most popular president in American history uh, announced that guess what, he's going to finish the job, Alana. Mr. Joe Biden is standing for re-election. Uh, what do you think of that? What was your re reaction to that nothing, one? Alana? Nothing. You told me about it, so you go go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you about I'm it, Dan. Yeah. Being different. I. Uh, why not? I mean, this is the age of the idiot. Well, it's the age of the puppet idiot because we also got this tweet coming out this afternoon or very in the last twelve hours. If we can just bring it up, here we have Mr. Barack Obama another massively popular president, saying that he's proud of Joe Biden, he's delivered for the American people, and he'll continue to do so once he's re-elected. Let's get to work. So this is Obama, and they're for the DNC, and you understand how this works as well as me, making it really, really clear who the favorite son is, which brings us to the main topic that we wanted to talk about, Alana, and that is a guy who actually, to be honest, I have been following him over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. predom predominantly on the on the, the, the back, yeah, yeah, on COVID, on COVID, Alana, and that of course is uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. and uh, and uh, so I have been following him, and you know I liked an awful lot of what he of what he was saying, and that all kind of came sort of coalesced just uh, I think a couple of days ago when he made something that you picked up with me, and that is he announced that he is standing to get the Democrat nomination for the presidency. Yeah, yeah. So let's chat about that. First of all, obviously, that made an impression with you. Well, I listened to, to the whole thing, and that was no waste of time because it was one of the most, um, of, of, of course, for man, he, he has some vocal cord disorder. Yeah. But for yeah. him, he spoke on a level, of beautiful English. He delivered extemporaneously. He spoke. Yeah. Yeah. I realize the man is brilliant. Let me just, before our audience begins to think Kennedy, or, well, his uncle and his, um, and his, well, certainly his uncle was conservative compared to any Republican today. I love uh, our, um, you, you know. Yeah. Jack Kennedy was saying, who, who would have said when he was in 
um, never mind. Uh, let me not take us off the off the topic. So just to orient our viewers and our listeners, yep. in case they think we're speaking about a liberal or progressive, some of the quotes I took out from this uh, almost two hour long address. It is not capitalism that has failed, but crony capitalism. Yep, great. Robert Kennedy Jr. The C Constitution was built for hard times. It is the heart and soul of our country. He said that in the context of the revolution. He can cite every clause of the Constitution, every statute, yep. every legislation that, that, that branches off, off it. Yep. Um, he is a historian. He spoke about the Revolutionary War, and he said we had so many plagues during the Revolutionary War. In that context, he spoke about the Constitution being built forever, for hard times. You don't mess with it. Tens of thousands of people and, and, and uh, military men died of, of various plagues during the Revolutionary War. That never made its way into the Constitution. How dare you violate individual rights. Yeah, that's what he did. Yep. That's what he said. Then he said, you need a president in this time of history who can stand up to his bureaucracy. And this, he said, he's litigated almost every um, every uh, malignant excrescent of the, the administrative state and yep. we labor. Um, yep. so he's he knows the ins and outs and he's litigated them. But he said that in connection with a critique of Trump, which I want to hear from you about, it maybe a mm -hmm. counter. He said Trump is accused of many things which he didn't do unfairly, but his greatest crime were the lockdowns. And mm -hmm. uh, Kennedy said Trump was rolled by his bureaucracy. Of course, he cited the, the cost of the lockdowns. What yep. you know, the numbers? I have the numbers. Um, yes. The absolute, he brought home with such power and emotion the decimation, the murder of the middle class. 3.3 million small businesses, uh, my husband tells me, must be more. Yeah. And according yeah. to Larry Summers, economist uh, from Harvard, Larry Summers, 16 trillion, um, the cost of the lockdowns. And that, this is why he said a president has to be able to stand up to his bureaucracy. And I reiterate that because when we, Law and order, Trump, he sent the National Guard to protect not us, only federal property, when 2,000 cities were, were burning, sections of cities were burning yeah. because of courtesy of Black Lives Matter. So yeah. that's one. So you just you counter on the bureaucracy, and then I'll give a few more of the quotes. Oh, well, okay, so, so let, let me come in. First of all, I want to echo and agree a lot of with what you've said so far, and I'm in agreement with it. First of all, the fact that a politician can speak for a couple of hours uh, with, without an auto cue tells you all you need to know. I, I've dealt with enough of them. I've been in enough situations. Uh, th this is a remarkable um, politician. But no, but no fluff, no foo-foo. No, 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 exactly. I, have, yeah, I yeah. have no patience. I have no patience unless it's substantive. I don't, I just, my yes, mind goes elsewhere. I was captivated. Yes, Captiv the fact that he passed the Alana test is in itself oh, a great achievement. Yeah, so he, did, he did well there. Now, um, so that's the first thing to be said. In the second instance, on the Trump scenario, because I know you and I don't exactly agree in this one, but I have very mixed emotions on it, to be honest, Alana. And again, I probably gravitate probably closer to your position than you think. I, I think, or uh, I, I think, there was a lot of things went wrong with the Trump presidency. I think he was surrounded by the swamp. He didn't move against it. He didn't. He did a lot of talking, not a lot of delivery. But that brings us to the whole lockdowns. That brings us to Operation Warp Speed, the militarization of vaccination. And for that, that that is that's, a, that, that's really bad. Like there's just no way from. I can't gild that and say See, that's a good he thing. Loves, he loves um, Trump. You know, just like his daughter wanted more than anything, to go to Davos with her stupid husband. Um, yeah. Trump loves the glitz. He loves the glamour and the glamour of the, you know, um, Fauci is, is quite a star. I mean, I, I was around when he was a, a, an HIV uh, hero and yeah. I was yeah. a counsel counsellor in Africa and a, a, HIV AIDS uh, counsellor and helping people and all that. So Trump was completely overwhelmed by the bureaucracy and he, he was. Was, 
Yep. And as, as uh, RFK says, they rolled him. Yeah, they did. Although the, one of my questions would be, if RFK was in the White House, would the bureaucracy rule him as well? No, no. If you listen to the entire... Tr <laughs> no, uh-uh. No way. But you have that's to... Okay, but you have to his father died, his uncle died. That guy's not afraid. <laughs> No, it's not. No, it's not. I mean, no, yeah. The thing, the thing we, you and I made the point about Ron DeSantis, and I think he is the next best, but he's not on the cal not intellectually RFK. Is that they are very intelligent. They know the Constitution and they know the levers of power that they can use that mirror the, the, those constitutional obligations and confines. Yeah. yeah. RFK knows. The, the, the bureaucracy and knows how to risk. Trump doesn't know anything. He doesn't know the Constitution. He is a charismatic, very lazy, intellectually lazy man. He's very charismatic. I love him to bits. First libertarian book of Trump. I, I know. Yes, I have it, Alana. I, yeah. just move, yeah. I move on from politicians. They are hired by us to do a job. I became a citizen because of Trump. Um, he inspired me a lot. So, But now it's time to move on. He is incapable of doing the next level, which is things we look to people with um, intelligence and knowledge and ability to move against the Bureau. You also have to have the balls. I love that he fired Comey. That was wonderful. But then mm -hmm. he lost it. He just lost it. He nominated Christopher Ray to the FBI. He nominated all kinds of insiders and neocons, sent Nikki Haley to the UN. Yeah, well, well, one of my biggest problems with Donald Trump, who I did support, was that in, in business, when you get, I mean, to get in the top in business, you have to make sure you select good people, efficient people that can deliver. And the very strange thing about the Trump presidency was, as you just pointed out, Alana, the selections of people, whether it was him making the selections or others, like the individuals you mentioned, the daughter and the son-in-law, um, it was ter terrible. It was it was really bad. And yet, and yet, for all that, I'm going to be clear in this one. I still stand on the Republican side. I I still prefer Trump to DeSantis. I still argue for that. But we're not going to we're, we're not going in the Republican Despite the argument. Fact that on a microcosm, um, DeSantis has actually practiced what we what we what we are preaching on a microcosm. In, in Florida, he's moved against deep tech. Um, he's moved against critical race theories. He knows what he can do as a governor, and he's implemented. Trump spoke. To be the president, okay, okay, counter argument. Who's got the greatest charisma, would you say? What do the polls show, Alana, on the Republican side? Who's connecting with the base? No, I thought Ron, uh, Ron DeSantis was leading in the polls. No, 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 no. No, but well, I, I don't think well, so. Well, then, then they deserve what they get. Well, you see, the thing is that, I mean, we have Republican rocker here saying, without President Trump, this country may as well be nuked. I think the Republican rocker, where Alana and I agree, is it's being nuked internally anyway. This is the problem. We, are, we have got, I, I mean, Alana, I always say, for me, the enemy is within, not without so and, and that that's, then that brings us right back into the, the what Robert Ke Ke or uh, Kennedy was saying because you know he he identified a lot of things in that speech which actually thirty years ago forty years ago a, a Republican would have been saying uh, you, you make you, you actually I know you started to go there and you went away from it but you know there was a time when the things that he talked about would have been perfectly respectable for a, a, a constitutionally minded Republican candidate to say. Um, but well, you know, he, he reminded me of Pat Buchanan. Um, Pat Buchanan yeah, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, the commitment to to uh, the middle class, and I thought that he was brilliant in in like Clinton in triangulation. Nothing was to, to me Kennedy shone because I think I analytically I can see where he's going with stuff. He didn't want to talk about race. I, I would fault him for not speaking about the war and why on whites and law. Yeah. But he did that tactically. I think he was doing that in a way behind him or blacks and whites all with that it was Trump people behind him. Blacks and whites, middle class, beautiful mm. faces, uh, mm. shining with sweetness, but with etched with pain. Their faces were etched with pain. Mm. What yeah. they through, no nose rings, no pink, nothing. Uh, <laughs> but he brought it back 
not just from the you know the Mount, Mount Olympus of philosophy. He brought it right back to the nit and grit of real life. He said, "My people are as much, um, you know, from from the Appalachian, the, the Appalachian yeah, um, yeah, impoverished yeah. as they are from um, whites of Appalachia are Kennedy voters." Our Kennedy constituents as much as Southeast Washington. And what he was saying is that this, this was his way of dealing with the war on whites. I, I still want more. And before our very mm. astute viewers, uh, many of whom are very aware of the intricacies of the immigration argument, he did not address that. He must do that. He must do that. Because his uncle, Ted Kennedy, may his name live in infamy, Yes. Ted, Ted yes. Kennedy was the yeah. fifth column, the fifth column, mm -hmm. who in 1965 yeah. passed the multicultural uh, legislation, uh, immigration mm -hmm. legislation that is responsible for, for, for chain migration, for changing America forever. Ted Kennedy. So um, mm -hmm. RFK must address immigration, must denounce this, this part of the wing of the family. The, the Ted Kennedy legacy, because he but he's brilliant. He knows it. You cannot have a strong middle class, which is all he, he was about, the working poor and the middle class, upwardly mobile working poor and a stable middle class cannot exist in when, when their country is swamped indefinitely with an infinite source of labor, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that he has to address, he still has to address. And, and, and nor can it be addressed, Alana, when the company open the country is drowning in debt. I mean, the U.S. financial system, it, it's a catastrophe, again, self-inflicted uh, by successive uh, administrations. But it's at the point now where it's really not sustainable any longer. And, and it was good to see that he, he obviously recognizes that, you know, there's a fundamental issue there. That's exactly it. And this is why, to me, the hallmark of a um, a fraud is someone who says small government, big government, starts talking that nonsense, that absolute. To me, the whole line of big government, we are party of small government, big government, is at this stage is as bad as Orwellian newspeak. Right. It is the most deceptive, disgusting. In fact, recently, and I'm going to say this, I, I lost a, a, a bit of a niche that I had at one one of those conservative uh, websites, and the yep. new editor kept on, she wouldn't tell me if my column was accepted or not, but she kept on giving me this stupid, reductive, idiot, first, just been to CPAC, um, Republican little uh, lecturer about big government, yep. small government, to, to yeah. someone who's fourth statism for 23 years. I know. Uh, but, and what I think I replied to her said with, 30 trillion in national debt and 300 trillion in unfunded li liabilities. Yeah, yeah. And with the dollar on, on the verge of collapse. Yep, it is. Uh, yeah. A Federal Reserve chicanery that has been ongoing for decades. Oh, decades, yeah. Shut the fuck up about that. Mm. So he mm. didn't mention that small government, big, big government, that's a whole, as you said, there's no, there's no returning to small government. No, it's not. No, and, and I'll tell you actually again, not to divert, but just on the topic. I noticed today that the leader of the House, Kevin McCarthy, I, I, I saw him saying, "Oh, we need to get down to negotiating regarding the debt ceiling with the uh, the Democrats." I have the, yes, don't. And the other the other talking yeah. point, the balanced budget amendment. <laughs> yeah, you, you, know, you know what a fraud it is. Yeah, absolutely, Alana. That is completely, absolutely fraudulent. And that tells you all you know about Kevin McCarthy, actually, that, oh, it's so pathetic that, you know. But, uh, but yeah, that's Sorry, are. David, our friend's just saying Ted was the one really bad Kennedy, yes, because the States Borough has, knows a lot about his history. There was much that was good about JFK, absolutely RFK. Not, even not sure, I'm not yeah. sure about old, I'm not sure about old Joe. No, he was, he was. Oh. In fact, RFK cited old Joe, who was a real businessman. He was rough and tough. He I was. Yeah, he was that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cited yeah. him when he said, when RFK delivering his speech said, um, he, these, he said, being an imperium ab abroad, 
will destroy democracy, turn America into a garrison and surveillance state, Robert Kennedy Jr. He then said, as long as our major exports are weapons and war, we will never have a middle class in this country. And he mm -hmm. said, the principal job of every president is to keep the country out of war. And then he brings in history and also history of his family. And he said, Joe, old Joe said, we need to be that garrison state we have Borders like, like you know, like uh, what do you call it when the moat comes down? That kind of border. We yeah. trade, we trade with everyone, and we go to war with nobody. So old Joey wasn't yeah. so bad. He was quite friendly with the mafia, though. But we're not. Oh really, yeah, but that's that's maybe different angle there, right? Yeah. But, but, but but you're but, Irish, you should know all about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so is he. Um, or so he claimed. Uh, but he was actually. But sure, all Irish presidents are are Irish, Alana. I mean, even Obama came from the Obamas of uh, Limerick or wherever. But anyway, um, no. no the, the other thing about um, about about that about this particular speech it's also the name i just want to just for a second to focus the name kennedy is kind of gold dust um by and large um you know th there, there's obviously the heritage and we all know about his uncle and his father and, and all of that there and and so it's a very powerful brand kennedy yeah. 24 and if ever there is a, an american arist aristocratic uh, yeah. family they are yeah. it uh, we've had awful families like the Bushes, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. and and the McCains. Lock them up. Oh, oh, the McCains, but, yeah. but Kennedy and definitely yeah. the White House. I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Jackie. The White House uh, during Jackie's mm -hmm. time was just a place of art, and she had Pablo Casals and the great musicians. Yeah. And she was she spoke she was educated in France. She she was an art uh, connoisseur. I love Jackie. Um, yeah. yeah, I see Kerry says over in Rumble, old Joe was in bed with the mob. He cut a deal with the outfit to buy Cook County for JFK. Yes, he did. That's absolutely true. But we're, <laughs> not, we're not we're not reliving old battles because this is the current battle because, you know, uh, uh, RFK has got to, well, to, to make all those fine words happen, he, he has to win, doesn't he? So, Alana, here's a big question. How is he going to do that? Well, as you pointed out, how is he even get the, going to get the nomination? I mean, the, the, the machine is going to stop him. Yep, he, it what, is. I completely what, agree. Uh, yeah. What was just up, if um, you can just get the last comment, that was interesting. Uh, by the way, RFK Sr. was a protege of Joe McCarthy. A good thing. A good well, Joe thing. McCarthy, yeah, that is a good thing. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that as well, Alana. Yeah, no. Nope. Thank you no for problem. that. Yeah. yeah, but 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 as I said, the machine, the 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 DNC machine kicked in today. Biden back for Biden for four more years. Obama, who's really I think running the operation in the background uh, behind that. So I don't see how he. He, he can get there. But he did put out a really good tweet. I wonder, can Jed bring up? I, I just wanted to share this one with all our, our viewers. Uh, and uh, it, yeah, I mean, this, th this is a testimony, Alana, to the quality and the character of the man. Um, and you see what he said here. You know, I've known and liked Joe Biden for many years, but we differ, differ profoundly on fundamental issues. He's a gentleman, but he, he did. Yeah, yeah, gentleman, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but gentlemen don't always win. But run up, but listen, he, um, yeah, just just waiting for that to to go. Yeah, just yeah, uh, yeah. So, so um, no, he he's he's a fighter. He's yeah. About the Democratic Party, he took off the gloves. Um, his contempt for the Democratic Party was fulsome, absolutely fulsome. He said about the Democratic Party, he called it deliciously. The war of fear, war, and censorship. Mm. Called them mm. neocons with woke bobbleheads. Yes, he did. Yeah, it's a great expression that one. Yeah. So he speaks very. Yeah. And then he said, "I will be the president to those people." In other words, people from Appalachia to Southeast Washington. Uh, we are going to take back the country. You give me a piece of ground and a sword, and I will take back this country with your help. We will go America first. Yeah, but it's Trumpian now, isn't it? That language. Yes, that's what's good. It's Trumpian only better. Yeah, because he. Because the best Trump... of Trump is the best of Trump. But then again, you know, the practicalities, the primaries, they won't let you. 
if can he get into a position where he runs as an independent because he can't how will he get to be a republican nominee a, de a democratic nominee he, he won't he, he, he won't. won't he won't <laughs> But 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 I don't think that's where it kind of ends because because the, no, the, Jed, he, he did not steal Trump's speech, not a bit of it. His intellect is way above there. I could watch him for two hours. Uh, I love watching Trump because of the excitement, but not because of the content. There's nothing there. Yeah, but 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 what I'm saying is that I think that the DNC, because it's so corrupt, and you know Alana what it's like, and you know, and and, and I admire him for wanting to try and. Um, get through that. But I think if he stood as an independent, he could still get himself maybe five, six, eight percent of the vote. In, oh. in, or, or do you think that's too optimistic? Because if he did. Oh, I know, but that's so uh, hopeless, isn't it? It's pretty well, much. Well, you see, but see, here's where real politics comes into this. This is ultimately going to be Hobson's choice. You're going to have Donald Trump. Or Joe Biden. That's the rematch that they are determined to give. Now I think it's manipulative, but I think that's the rematch. But but after well, I mean maybe after, maybe don't, Donald Trump will hire this guy. Well, some people have, I've heard people suggest wouldn't he make a great uh, running candidate with Donald Trump as his VP? So long as the, uh, the VP is very um, passive politically, so long as he's given yeah, that's well, true. The other thing um, about he he was brilliant about Ukraine. And again, for mm. the old war, anyone who wants to understand me, and nobody what, does, um, read my anti-war work uh, over years. Um, mm. About war, he was brilliant. And he didn't echo my perspective, but I could see where he was getting. What did he say about Ukraine, Kennedy? He first of all said, um, it was a brilliant piece of philosophical triangulation, bringing everybody's, there's nobody in America who could object to what he was saying about Ukraine. That's why I say he's brilliant. Trump is not brilliant. So what he said was this. He said, um, you know, the America obviously is in, in, involved in geopolitical machinations, right? Mm -hmm. However, Ukraine is being peddled as a humanitarian mission. This is what Kennedy explained. And he said, we Americans are humanitarian people. But side by side with that, we are saying that we want to affect regime change. We know that. We know that. Oh, yeah. So what he said, and this was the coup de grace, he said, if we are prolonging the war to wear Russia down in the name of regime change, he argued brilliantly, he said, we are surely using Ukraine, and to quote, to create an abattoir of death for the country yeah. of its young. Right. So now, David, so listen. So what he's proven with one fell swoop is that this is not a humanitarian Oh no! So this, so Americans are a militant people. This is what I. This my introduction to America was was Iraq. Americans are militant people. So what he's done here, he's made an argument that appeals to Democrat, Independent, Republican. We are militant but humanitarian, and we use compassion, um, and we are sentimental to a fault. And this is what he's addressing. Nobody can object to that argument that this is no longer humanitarian it's not my argument it's not um a libertarian natural rights just war theory argument it's not even a constitutional argument but you know what it is it's an american argument and it's a and it comes from a man who knows americans yeah yeah and of course he's he, he is right in what he says that the the thing as as we talked about alana as as you well remember back in early in january of 20 22 when this whole thing kicked off before it kicked off i mean we were pretty clear in what the what what really this is about this is about nato wants to expand they want to take russia and if they could get china as well they would do it so we know what the game is here um and the the amount of money that by the, the biden regime is pumping into into ukraine at a time when half of America doesn't even work, you know, your infrastructure's broken, all of that. But hey, it doesn't matter. It's all going to Zelensky. It's, it's amazing. So it's good to see uh, RFK on the button and that. For me, Alana, another issue that he was on the button was over the whole vaccine. I mean, the vaccine has been a big thing for me over the past few years, a big eye-opening thing. And, and it's great to have someone like 
like him of his stature, uh, pretty much in, in my account. It's not the purely the vaccine, it's the pharma state and the administration. Pharma state, yeah. He, he yeah. links it to the deep, the, the pharma state, the state capture yep. um, by industry, uh, corporate feudalism. He, he speaks deeply yep. about the structure. I, I think James Burnham in the 40s spoke about the managerial state only just developing under which we yeah. live. This is yeah. not constitutional. These, and he explained in the speech, I really urge people to understand, to, that was his major, the lion's share of the impetus was on the managerial administrative state, how it works, how it's cap captured by, um, by industry. And he spoke about classic agency capture, which is very much libertarian, in which every single industry is regulated by the actual industry in cahoots with the regulators and against the people. Yeah. So yeah. this is how he related the tremendous, the decimation of the middle class and the lockdowns to the pharma state, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah. is, which is part of this unconstitutional managerial administrative state under which we labor. And he knows it. Can, he, can anybody go up against it? Trump couldn't, and Trump has the stamina. No, um, I don't know, but he's, he, he spoke in a way that was intricately familiar of it, with it, and he, he has litigated very does, yeah. successfully, successfully to the tune of hundreds of millions against yeah. these, um, these agencies. He has, in actual fact, Lana, forget about the COVID vaccine. He's gone after Big Pharma on a whole front of, of other of their... Um, Monsanto, the lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so he, he actually has walked the walk, and uh, yeah, he, absolutely he, has. You know, so, so in that regard, Alana, I because I, I think when it comes to Trump, and, and I could be wrong, but I think I'm right in this. Uh, if you go by people like me, a lot of folks like me would say with Trump, he he, he really got it wrong over the vaccine, he got it wrong with That's the lockdown. That's as we've just said 16, 16 trillion decimation of middle class. Yeah. He, yeah, had, yeah. he had he had a black uh, a, a business people, sweet people. I mean, black didn't matter. They looked to me middle class uh, people. People I'd love to have as neighbors. You know, they had saved up, solvent, did responsible things, saved up to to open the, their. Uh, he was a chef, chef who was lauded in all the local press um, to open up his his restaurant. And what happened? Um, the chairs were stacked. He was he was shuttered. Yeah. He and then the government gave him seventeen thousand dollars and said you have to spend it in two weeks. Here's a man who who, who saves. He doesn't seventeen thousand, and he's yeah. now with a from starting a successful business at age fifty, fulfilling his American dream. This black businessman has two hundred thousand debt, and he had a a, a white man similarly tell yeah. the same story. Middle class people devastated and this happened he did put that at the feet of trump 16 trillion damage and i think that's underplaying it you, but, you, you know more about the stock exchange than i do and over th over three three point three million job yeah. uh, four businesses gone. and that's because i i don't think trump had the insight into big pharma and the big pharma state yes, that, that's, or, what, that's just, the point yeah you need to be Highly intelligent. I'm not saying DeSantis is an intellectual. Um, RFK is. Um, RFK is an intellectual. Um, Naomi Wolf is, a, is an intellectual. Um, I'm not saying you have to be, but you need to to be. Well, DeSantis is a constitution is a lawyer, right? I mean, he, he's very smart. He knows exactly the levels of power. He knows the administrative state. Trump is not doesn't know anything. He relies on people, and the people he got in. Um, were vested in keeping things the same. Mm, yeah, I think I, I certainly think yeah that the knowing the nature of what you're up against, which RFK does for all the reasons we've talked about for the last fifty minutes, is a huge uh, advantage in being able to change things. But that's assuming that things can be changed. I mean, as I say, I think the Amer I mean, you, you and I have talked about this before. My own particular view is that your electoral system is broken. Hopelessly broken, hopelessly 
Paul, yeah. I'm, I'm conscious that we're on Facebook and YouTube, so we're okay, a bit particular how I put this. But I think there's huge issues regarding the authenticity uh, of how uh, elections are fortified. And uh, and so I, I'm not sure if that therefore means... Well, well by, by the mere fact that you might have um, these, these uh, controversial candidates might get... Um, a huge swathe of the population, but they can't gain because of party party rules that are almost they're ossified. They're almost like constitutional rules. Party rules, be it Republican or Democrat, they can't enter the race. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, you have uh, donation. You can't give uh, if a billionaire wanted to support RFK. There are all these rules that you can't. Um, you know. D campaign finance rules that they can they can put we've become a police state we've become a police state and let me once again say as a south african we used to have yep. a, a a term um arrest without trial he spoke about this not in the same um wording that i use or if i'm just using the south african arrest without trial yeah to yep. us it was the epitome of a police state how many people are languishing without due process in America? Well, how many people were arrested over January 6th? And, um, and, you know, by the way, before I forget, he condemned, he was very politic and very, he condemned Lincoln. I have never heard a Democrat to come. He sounded like an old Dixiecrat, which just like Joe McCarthy is a great, great thing to me. Um, he sounded like an old Democrat in the sense that he said, Lincoln abolished constitutional rights during the Civil War. He did? said when Lincoln wanted to do away with habeas corpus, which relates to arrest without trial, habeas corpus is the right to demand, if I'm, I might be mistaken, maybe lawyers can, can tell me, demand that you have immediate redress if, if you are arrested. Lincoln abolished, I mean, suspended habeas corpus. This is huge. RFK condemned him for that. He, he, he also, actually, Lincoln also closed down uh, dozens of newspapers that he did that were not. Exactly. Uh, yeah. He, he, I mean, there's a lot of uh, romanticism there that. Oh, well, Lincoln's an enemy of any. I mean, his sick brother and brother, the greatest tragedy uh, in our history. Um, mm, mm, but but so so like as I say, th this was a, a momentous speech, Alana, and I, I, I would suggest that for. For, for someone to make a speech that long and to get your attention for that long is a remarkable achievement. <laughs> if nothing else happens... Uh, you, you know me. <laughs> I do, I do, Alana. And, and, but, but I haven't said that. I mean, I, did, I read... You know a, me and you accept me. I do. And, and, and I think a lot of people will accept RFK as well. I think... He, he, he comes across as likable. He does have the vocal problem, though, and it, it is yeah, a problem. It is uh, aesthetic. It's a real problem, isn't it? It's but problem, we have yeah. Biden, uh, who's senile, demented, and evil. And yep. then we have people like Federman, who... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, but, right. but, I mean, And we have Kamala. Kamala. Yeah, but yeah, but it's going to be Joe. Joe is... Uh, Joe, what, what his catchphrase is, let's finish it. Which, if ever there was, uh, that, yeah, let's finish America. That's Joe's. That's Joe's, Joe's punchline, you know. So, so I think it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. Just on 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 Robert Kennedy's uh, uh, speech issue, I I only listened to a very small number of uh, podcasts, um, but mainly because I'm so busy. But one of the podcasts that I do listen to. Is because he's got a podcast channel and he puts stuff out, mm -hmm. and it's very it's, good. Okay, I, I'll definitely follow suit. It, it's very good, and the only downside to it is because it's a podcast, it's audio, so it's all about the sound of the voice, and, yeah. and his voice. It is. It it it, it, it it would be so perfect if if he didn't have whatever yeah. that. What is I, I think it's just some sort of uh, voice modulating disorder or vocal cords or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, we, we live in the age of the superficial, Alana, as you, as you fully yeah, understand. Yeah. That, that's the problem. Um, mm. But uh, he's he's presentable. He's got the Kennedy. He looks well. He's, yep. he's very witty, and I like, what did he say? He said that I am such an imperfect candidate, I would not run if things were so desperate. I have so many um, uh, skeletons in my closet. 
if they could vote, I would win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, there was another moment, a, a fire alarm, uh, I think on one or maybe two occasions, yes, yes. the fire alarm went off and he quipped, nice try, because <laughs> I'm sure it was a complete coincidence that the fire yeah. alarm went off. C-SPAN was very, very nice and neutral. They're still doing their neutral uh, journalism, yeah. Yeah, then, but, we've discussed two very good men, and and we really pray for them, Tucker and and um, or if they, yeah, or if yeah, they, yeah. I mean, especially, yeah. I mean, I mean, isn't it remarkable that we talk about some of the awful people America has, like Joe Biden, for example, uh, uh, um, like Don Lemon, uh, but but we mustn't forget that there are these very decent, honourable, outstanding people like Tucker Carlson, like Robert Kennedy Jr. And it just shows, Alana, that sometimes, you know this, and, and I know you don't go this way, and, and, and nor do I, this sort of looking at the world so simplistically, right versus left, Republican, de you know, th those cliches, frankly, don't, don't matter at all. It's no, about the quality no. of the end of, of exactly. the people. Exactly, and with RFK, we saw populism. We we saw better than Pat Buchanan on a war, um, but needs to get there on immigration and law and order, and to speak out about. He did speak about racial enmity. Um, look, we can't have a candidate that writes uh, runs against anti the war the, against the war on whites. It's not going to happen, right? The Republicans are almost for the war on whites. I mean, they've had. Uh, very little. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're pathetic. Their, their, their line is, um, you know, they're always going out of the way to show how badly things, in, anything that happens to whites impacts badly on blacks. So they are a twisted bunch. Um, uh, I, so I did, what, what would your ideal candidacy look like? Mine would be RFK, Pat Buchanan as speaker, as uh, <laughs> yes, Pat Buchanan, Naomi Wolf, um, Glenn Greenwald definitely has to be in there somewhere. Well, um, you see, Alana, I'm, you mentioned Naomi Wolf a couple of times. As you know, Naomi did help out in the Clinton campaign. So yes, she's I'm, bad on the racial, racial issue, very bad on the racial issue. She yeah. condemned Imus, if my fa fabulous memory serves me, she condemned Imus together with all the hordes when he said, um, he made a joke about, uh, sort of about the, the, you remember the basket players, Mm -hmm. uh, that nappy headed something. Yeah. Um, she condemned, she piled on there. But you know what I like about Naomi Wolf, other than she's very, very bright, English is beautiful, she's yeah. attractive, attractive um, our age. <laughs> um, um, you, in, you did a fabulous interview with her. We did a good chat. We but did. Yeah. She, has, she is contrite about her past. And she is. Yeah. She yep. is intellectually honest and she speaks from the heart. So she she doesn't seem someone who would get into power like the people Trump is going to bring in. It's going to be the same family, even though um, the the what's her name uh, Ivanka. Look, he sent his daughter in laws to to Fox. Good that they were fired because the, the, the um, another another Don I think yeah. it was one of the sons responded. Tucker Carlson and Lara Trump. Lara who? Yeah, I, I, and actually, just, sorry. you know, just, Lara Trump was fired, and and her brother put the firing of Tucker Carlson and Lara Trump. You're going to see the same nepotism worthy yeah. of a third world. Yeah, I, 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 again, a comment that just came across. Are you upset, me. David, about Lara Trump going? Yeah, no, no, no. Listen, I, 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 I agree with all of that. I would, um, well, we'll, we'll not, not get all these comments read out. Uh, but um, I, I think that the, the, the thing for me is that uh, I would love to see Naomi Wolf help RFK out because she, that would be brilliant. And I, I agree with all you've said yeah, about yes, Naomi. We, Naomi need hard, we need hard writers as well, like Pat Buchanan. I think he's retired, but, but somewhat. Oh, Pat Buchanan. For the speech writing, so Tucker's a wonderful writer, but nobody beats Pat Buchanan and Tucker uh, in there as well. Wow, what a so, government! Kerry says, "Hang on, Alana. The ultimate ticket for 2024: Tucker, Tucker, and Alana." So there we go, Alana. Your your first um, presidential nomination, uh, presidential nomination, uh, live on the stream. Listen, we are coming to the end of our yes. 60 minute segment, which we. I, said I seek before. nothing but attribution for what I do for my work. I don't care about all this stuff. Um, 
or uh, or else I wouldn't have uh, become a dissident as soon as I began writing for the American market. So I don't care about that. Yeah. I'm happy to see these people who are more, um, you know, not not shy on retiring. Um, these people are all extroverts, and and I'd be happy to see a cabinet made up of those people. Yeah, I think I think what America needs is people of substance, people of deep principle, uh, and and unfortunately, the political class tends not to attract those. And that's that's the awful reality. I could we could do another show about how that equally. Exactly, funny. David, and also the there is yeah. one cannot um, one cannot deny what my my uh, friend Clyde, uh, Professor Clyde Wilson says. There is a a thread of mediocrity and the need to maintain mediocrity that you almost don't see in, in the UK. You still have some very, um, you still maintain some sort of institutional quality. And you still have pride in in, um, in your intellectual heritage. America is just a drive to the, to the, the lowest common denominator, mediocrity. So oh. the enemies of excellence are, um, and I think that's at large playing out with Tucker. He's just not mediocre. No, no, but he, you know, he's, he's exceptional. Robert Kennedy Jr. is exceptional. This has been an exceptionally good conversation. Okay. And I think what we'll, do is we'll, we'll bring the curtain down in this one, but we'll watch this one, Alana, because this story was going, is going to run and run. It's not going to be the end of it by any means. But uh, I would echo pretty much all you said about uh, Robert, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. I hope he does really well. Um, America deserves so much better than than the the right Biden and slash Obama uh, and uh, you know uh, if the I'd like to see the Republican Party exercise the same the same uh, intellectual honesty that JRK exercised during that speech I'd like to see that but there's time and we'll again we'll have to watch out anyway listen folks wherever you are whichever stream you watched us on. Thanks for all your different comments. Sorry if we didn't get to you. We can't get to everybody, but we appreciate that, Alana and myself. And um, thank you, David. You're... Lovely seeing you. And uh, we meet here in when we should. We we should put it in the calendar and okay. uh, make yeah. sure that four, four weeks. Four four weeks time. Yeah, or thereabouts, folks. Yeah, um, yeah. We hard truth will return. So yeah. uh, all cir circumstances and, permitting. And do subscribe, please. Yes, do make sure if you don't, if you haven't subscribed to us, uh, you do that on on, on, on the relevant uh, uh, platforms, Rumble in particular. So, folks, without any further adieu, we'll wish you adieu and uh, catch up soon. Thanks, uh, everybody, for listening and watching us. Thank you now. Bye-bye.